In 2003, Antwerp, Belgium, the diamond capital, saw a weekend like no other on February 15th and 16th. What happened there wasn't just an event, it was a plot twist that became permanent in the captivating tale of criminal history. A group of smart thieves pulled off the heist of the century, making it the largest diamond theft ever. This mysterious story describes a mastermind named Leonardo Notabartolo, an 18 month plan and a fault guarded by super advanced security. From sneaky spying to clever ways of turning off alarms, the story takes us through the exciting moves that led to stealing diamonds, gold and jewelry worth over 100 million dollars. This isn't just a heist, it's a tale of brilliance and cunning. Welcome to the world's greatest diamond disappearance where reality outshines fiction. Chapter 1 Diamond Heaven It all began in the Antwerp Diamond District, a small area that holds around 80% of the world's rough diamonds. This district is like a maze of important deals, old traditions and secret transactions, watched over by a special police group called the Diamond Squad. In the middle of this diamond world is the Antwerp Diamond Center, a super secure building with an underground fault. This fault gained fame in February 2003 when it became the target of a huge heist. The fault had a massive steel door and lots of security features like heat detectors, radar, a magnetic field, seismic sensors and a lock with 100 million combinations. The room just before the fault was really tough for anyone trying to steal something. But Norte Bartolo, instead of thinking it was impossible, saw a chance to succeed where others thought they couldn't. As we uncover the Antwerp Diamond's highest fascinating details, I'm grateful for the incredible support, much like the teamwork involved in the heist itself. If you enjoyed the video so far, hitting the like button is like voting for more content like this. Your likes and subscriptions drive our work, just like the plan in the Antwerp Diamond Heist. Now let's continue our exploration of this captivating heist. Chapter 2 The Master Plan Now you might be wondering who Norte Bartolo is? Well. Leonardo Norte Bartolo was born in 1967, known for being really good at doing sneaky and daring criminal things. His target was a famous diamond place in Belgium called the Antwerp World Diamond Center. It's like a huge treasure chest full of shiny diamonds. Leonardo wanted to steal those diamonds so he made a plan that later became a big deal in history. First he rented an office space right inside the diamond center. It was like having a secret hideout in the middle of all those precious diamonds. That was the start of his big plan to take them. For a year and a half Leonardo did some super sneaky stuff to get ready for his big diamond heist. He acted like a spy, watching the diamond center closely. But that wasn't all. He pretended to be a gem importer from Italy and everyone believed him. He had been a master at stealing since he was a little kid. At the age of 6 he sneaked into the milkman's place and stole money. That's when he discovered he was born to be a thief. As he grew up he became even more skilled. He studied people, learned to pick locks and even formed a team of thieves known as the School of Turin. Norte Bartolo was so good at charming people that he could walk into places, pretend to be a happy jeweler and then steal their treasures. 
One day, he met with a mysterious dealer who wanted to hire him for a big robbery. The dealer gave him a task to find out if the fold in the diamond center could be robbed. Being the clever thief he was, Norto Bartolo came up with a plan. He went into the diamond district with a special camera hidden in his pen and took secret pictures of everything. Despite all the security, he managed to get into the diamond center, past the guards and even into the vault. The vault had a massive steel door with so many locks and alarms, it seemed impossible to break into. But Norto Bartolo was determined. After taking pictures and studying the place, he told the dealer it couldn't be done. However, the dealer didn't give up. Five months later, he called Norto Bartolo again and showed him something unbelievable. An exact replica of the Diamond Center's fault. It was like a movie set. In the replica fault, Norto Bartolo met three extraordinary people. The genius could disable alarms, the monster was good at everything and the king of keys could forge a key almost impossible to duplicate. With this team, they planned the biggest heist. They even created a secret camera inside a fire extinguisher to record the fault's combination. And guess what? They succeeded. Going back to when Leonardo was paying attention to everything, like how the guards were moving and the layout of the diamond place. It was like making a map of all the secret spots. He found out where the security wasn't so good. Leonardo didn't just watch, he became a part of the diamond world. By pretending to be a diamond lover, he gained the trust of the people who work with diamonds. This trick gave him super important information that he used in his big plan. The spy part was like being a detective. Leonardo and his team watched how the security people did their jobs, looked at the building layout and found the weak points in the security systems. Leonardo was good at paying attention to all the tiny details. This information became the base for the next steps in his plan to steal the diamonds. Chapter 3 Overcoming Security and Executing the Heist Finally, the big day came in February 2003. Norto Bartolo, known as the Monster, had a plan that involved a peculiar tool, a can of women's hairspray. Sneaking into the fold that day, before the big heist, he skillfully used the hairspray to disable the sensors, filling the room with a sweet scent. Even though the security camera caught every move, the guard used to Norto Bartolo's frequent visits didn't pay much attention. With the sweet aroma in the air, Norto Bartolo had a short time to carry out his plan, installing a sensor bypass before his body heat gave him away. The countdown has begun and time was running out. Meanwhile, across town, the Diamond District was empty. Norto Bartolo and his team, the genius, the king of keys and Speedy gathered at the Diamond Center. Their steps were coordinated following a detailed plan. The genius led them to a hidden terrace shielded from view. Using a ladder they had hidden earlier, he approached a heat-sensing infrared detector. With his shield made of homemade polyester, he fooled the sensor, making it blind to their presence. Their path to the fault unfolded like a well-practiced dance. The King of Keys picked locks, the genius manipulated magnetic fields and the monster disabled security systems with precision. They moved in the darkness, 
leaving no trace for the security cameras. As they approached the vault door, the genius redirected the magnetic field using a custom made aluminium slab. The King of Keys discovered a major security flaw. The original vault key conveniently hanging in a utility room. They made a quiet duplicate, a secret they guarded. With the vault door exposed, the monster took center stage. He navigated through the security systems, delicately rerouting electric pulses. His hands worked like surgeons, stripping wires, and with his precise bridge, the senses were rendered useless. But caution prevailed. The team blinded detectors, covered sensors, and worked swiftly in the shadows. The King of Keys, with a hand-cranked drill, broke open locks, revealing a trove of gold bars, currencies from around the world, and bags filled with diamonds. As dawn approached, they had opened 109 boxes. But time was running out. Bags filled with riches needed to be moved to Norta Bartolos' car before the city woke up. Chapter 4 Perpetrators Escape and Discovery The thieves climbed the stairs together, past the sensors, and met up in the building's hallway. Norda Bartolo, waiting outside in his Peugeot, kept an eye on things. When the bags were lifted, a signal was given, and the team came out into the quiet early morning. But the victory didn't last long. Back in Norta Bartolo's apartment, as they opened the bags and satchels, a shocking discovery was made. The diamonds were gone. The joy turned to shock. They had been tricked. In a town called Adro, in Italy, things got pretty confusing. The team met up again, got suspicious and had a lot of questions in a dimly lit bar. The diamond dealer, who was supposed to share the stolen stuff, never showed up. The team felt betrayed and confused. They started thinking that maybe their super planned heist was just a part of a big insurance trick. As the day ended on their not so great victory, Norta Bartolo found himself stuck in a mess of suspicion. He had no idea that a random discovery in a Belgian forest would mess up his big plan. A guy named August van Kemp, who really liked weasels and hated litter, found a bunch of garbage in his forest hideout. In that mess, there were clues that set off a chain of events leading to the arrest of the mastermind. The detectives carefully collected the trash and found some pretty bad stuff. An invoice with Norta Bartolo's name, a business card linking to an electronics expert, and a half-eaten salami sandwich. All these things were like pieces of a puzzle falling into place. And Norta Bartolo was heading back to Belgium, and pays and the broker wondered if they'd ever catch the daring thieves who pulled off the diamond heist. They thought the culprits could be anywhere. Brazil, Thailand, Russia. What they didn't expect was for one of the robbers to boldly return to the same district they had robbed. Surprisingly, that's exactly what Norta Bartolo did. While a friend waited outside the diamond center, he casually collected his mail, waving at the security guard. Unbeknownst to him, the guard tipped off the building manager, triggering events that led to Norbert Torlo's encounter with the detectives. When the police showed up, they found Norto Bartolo chatting with the building manager, acting innocent. His friend quickly escaped leaving Norta Bartolo to pretend 
he had trouble with language and memory. Pace wasn't fooled. Let's go then, he said, loading the Italian into a car. Norto Bartolo, still stalling, finally pointed out his apartment as the police car pulled up. Just in time, as his wife and friends carrying bags and a rolled up carpet were about to disappear. The police swooped in, taking everyone into custody. The bags held crucial evidence, such as prepaid SIM cards linked to cell phones used only to contact three Italians, Elio Di Honorio, the genius, Ferdinando Finotto, the monster, and jittery guy likely to be speedy, Pietro Tavano. On the highest night, cell tower records placed all three along with Norte Bartolo in the Diamond District. Tavano stayed in constant contact with Norte Bartolo. Italian police opened Norte Bartolo's safe in Turin, finding 17 polished diamonds with certificates from the fault. More gems were discovered in a rolled up carpet in his Antwerp apartment. Chapter 5 The Heist and its Aftermath Norte Bartolo's Tail The Belgian courts were tough on Norte Bartolo, giving him a 10 year sentence for planning the heist. The evidence, like phone records, a specific salami sandwich, led the French police to search for Finado's girlfriend's home. They found $100 bills believed to be from the Diamond Center. De Honorio admitted to putting security cameras but denied being part of the crime. His DNA was found in the fault on tape. He was sent to Belgium and started a five-year sentence in November 2007. Tavano, another involved person, is serving time in Italy and staying quiet through his lawyer. There is a fifth thief on the loose, known only from phone records and DNA. The King of Keys got away. In 14 weeks of prison visits, questions lingered. Did they steal 100 million dollars as the police said, or just 20 million dollars as Norto Bartolo insisted? Was it part of a big insurance scam, or was Norto Bartolo's story a distraction? Maybe his mafia, a relative, was behind it all. The main question remained, where is the stolen stuff now? The diamond trade is unclear. Detective De Broeker said three quarters of the business is shady. If legal claims were $25 million, he thought an extra $75 million in goods were stolen, making the heist worth $100 million. If Norto Bartolo's theory is right, dealers in on the scam took their goods before the heist, filled claims, got the insurance money and kept their stock. The $20 million found belonged to those not part of the scam. Or there was no scam. The thieves found $100 million in the fault and Norto Bartolo made up a story. Regardless, millions disappeared and Norto Bartolo wouldn't spill about the loot. His share might be hidden in the Italian Alps, waiting for his release from prison. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more stories like this one.